Hello everyone, today we'll be, we are going to be doing an excuse generator that works similar to this one so that when you refresh the website it shows a different excuse that you can give to your mother or to your teacher or to your boss. We decided to do this exercise because it's uh, a fun way of using a little, a little, little JavaScript. If you don't know, if you don't know JavaScript at all, but you have practiced some, uh, like you're starting practicing, then this is gonna be a fun exercise because you will be able to do it without, without much knowledge, and also it's cool because you're gonna have excuses to give to everyone around you during the rest of your life. If you wanna read about. Um, before before watching this video you can just read the instructions here and try to do it yourself and if not then you can just watch the video hope you like it okay so to start we are going to be using like I always like to use a boilerplate because I don't want to start from scratch you should always as a developer avoid doing things from scratch because the whole idea of being a developer is using different models and reusing code so uh, for this I like to use the boilerplate that we have created for the for the academy that we run in um, Miami Florida and I'm gonna be using this one in particular vanilla JS because it, it creates like a bunch of folders and stuff that you can use every time you want to start a normal simple vanilla JS application. I say vanilla JS because it's a joke that it has become super popular because now that everything is a framework and everything is a tool then like normal plain JavaScript uh, doesn't seem uh, very appealing so people started calling it vanilla JS just to joke about it and, and now it's like people say ah, I want to do it with vanilla JS or what's vanilla JS I want to use it I want to try it and it's basically this normal plain vanilla, normal plain uh, JavaScript. So this boilerplate, and I'm also going to be using Cloud9 because that's what we use at the academy. But you, if you have brackets and, with, and um, Visual Studio and any of that, it's going to still work. So to start, I have to switch, I think. Let me see. Let me clear this screen. Yeah. So I think I'm here at, at the folder, the project folder. No. Let me see. Yeah, excuse. Yeah, it's an empty folder. It has nothing. As you can see, I'm doing a less and it shows nothing. And here it shows nothing either. So the next thing will be if you're using the Briscoe CLI and, and you're following this boilerplate, it would be because I already have this, you know, you I don't have to do it because I already have this and I'm already using node. 8. I recommend always using at least the version 8 for now. If you see this video in a year, then you probably have to use Note 12 or something like that. So let's just start a new project and for that all we have to say is a brief code start vanilla JS. The minus R is because I want to start the project on the same folder which I'm standing, where I'm standing. So now I have a bunch of files here as you can see and those files uh, like it seems like a lot of files to just do a simple application, but it's because I, I want I want to focus on using Webpack because I really feel that it's gonna become a or it's already it already has become a, a professional way of doing development in JavaScript because it creates a a bundle for you. It's a bundle. It's it's only like a single central JS file instead of having a bunch. Because having a bunch of JS files can become really disorganized. So the idea of Webpack is, okay, let's just put everything together into one JS. And also, you can use the last version of JavaScript if you want. And it's, it's going to work in every browser. Because we're going to be using something called Bubble. That it will translate all your code into all the versions of JavaScript. So that basically Internet Explorer can run it. Or with some other exceptions of other old browsers if you want to learn more about webpack i'll i'll i have a video about that and also uh, classes on briscoe you can just go to the briscoe platform here and read about uh, webpack so let's start with the project 
when you have an application that you have downloaded or that you have cloned from Git or that you have started using the Brisco CLI. It doesn't matter if you don't use the Brisco CLI. What matters is that you use an application that has already been started and you are like downloading it and continuing coding on it. All, all you have to do at the beginning is npm install. And you have to do that because it comes with a bunch of libraries that you depend on. And npm install will create a new folder here called Call it not modules, and that folder, it's going to have all the dependencies. That's not your code. That's third-party code that you will use that is not the same. That's why it's in a different folder, and Git ignores that folder because you're not going to change those files. Those files are from third-party, and you just have to use them as they are. That's why it's not included in Git, in, Git. in your Git repository, if you have one. So... The packages we'll be using is, of course, Webpack. Let's also read about the index. This, this boilerplate is divided in all your code should be in the source folder. Your public application should be in public, and not most is third-party code. Those are the only three folders that we have. All the rest of the, the files here, like ESLint, for example, is, is to help you uh, follow some rules that uh, are considered like professional or best practices. And this is going to like always remind you and, and, and tell you, listen, you have to indent properly. You have to use, uh, you cannot use this library here because it's not part of the uh, best practices and uh, stuff like that. The manual, it's just uh, a readme of how to use, uh, how is how was this installed, the boilerplate. And then the package of JSON, it's in every node module, in, a, in every application that is that uses npm and here's where you put all your dependencies all the third party that everything that's going to be in node modules it's specified here you can see it if you want like for example we're saying bubble at the beginning here and it's here in this folder we're also saying bootstrap here and it's probably on the left where's bootstrap here it is bootstrap and so and so everything is in the node modules you see that there are a lot more folders, folders than dependencies here, but that's because some of the dependencies also use other dependencies, like nested dependencies. That's why it has it has so much folders. Okay, so back to the source. You have to code everything on JS, and then this the style sheet that you wanna that you wanna have is this one. So you can put your styles here if you want. Also, we are not going to need jQuery, so I'm going to delete this from the index. And then I'm just going to save and, and uh, do and create my first bundle to see how my application looks. And for that, you have to do npm run build. npm run build is basically creating a bundle. You're going to see it here. It's going to tell you, okay, I have created the bundle and it has this size. Here, here it is. Here's my bundle. Every, all my JS is going to be... Right now, I only have four lines or five lines of code. But as we grow, and, as, and we can have more files if we want inside the folder, all of the files that we create are going to be put into a one big bundle. Right now, my bundle has almost uh, 700 kilobytes, and that's like a lot, but it's because I'm using Bootstrap and other... So I have a lot a lot more code than that what's here, because I'm importing Bootstrap. So I also have in my bundle the Bootstrap code. Bootstrap has a bunch of JS. <laughs> So that's part of the bundle. If I remove Bootstrap, let me remove it for a second and see if the bundle now becomes smaller. It's 679. Let me just run it again and we'll see how big it is now. So it's 200, so it's a lot less, right? So you have to be careful. When you're using Webpack, you can just import a bunch of stuff and then if you don't use it, just leave it there. No. You have to be very careful because your bundle can grow very fast and, and you don't want to have a big bundle because it's it's going to take a lot of time to download when uh, your application is uh, being shown. Now that we have created our bundle, I'm going to right click here and say run and it's going to basically give us, give us a URL of our website. And here we have our little baby. You're going to see the baby every time that you install a boilerplate from Brithcode. And that means good news, basically. We can open the inspector 
and see that it says hello rigor from the console that's this look hello rigor from the console so basically here's the beginning of our application because all the JS applications start on load on load is like the first event that happens on a browser it happens when all the all the HTML and the JS has been finally loaded and the application is ready to start running. So that's why we had a console.log there. Every, everything you console.log here is going to show on the console. But in, and uh, let's say again, hello. I'm just going to save it and rebundle. And you're going to see how now the message will change. Basically. If I refresh now, it says hello. And it says this red thing that is new. If you can see this in, in the inspector, you, ha you have an error. But you don't, we don't really have an error, it's because we edited the code. And the code, let me go back for a second, was deleting something from the, here. I was selecting from the DOM this element with the glass error and I was saying display none. And this is basically this element here. Wait, let, let me inspect it so you can see. It has a glass error. So that's there just, just for, uh, so you can test it if your bundle has worked or not. Because if there's an error in JavaScript, this line is not going to execute properly. So you're going to see the red stuff. What we are going to be doing is deleting this. And also the, in the index, because this is what we're running. Actually, index. Look, doing public index.html. And this is inside public index.html. I'm just going to delete it from the HTML. The baby. And I'm going to put here, hello world and refresh. So there we go. We have our hello world without the baby. No baby anymore. So basically all the HTML that we're gonna do it's gonna be here because we're not using react react or anything like that. And all the JS is gonna be in index and all the CSS is gonna be in as in index.scss. So to start because we have to do an excuse generator let me go to the instructions again. I think I lost them. Excuse generator. So it says here, please create a small website that generates an excuse each time a button is pressed. Oh, not on reload, but in but when a button is pressed. I'll do both so you guys can see. Look at the demonstration and ask your mentor for details. I, it has to look like this. So let's click here. It has to look like this how I show it at the beginning of the video. Okay, so, oh my God, you will not believe me, but let's do that. Oh my God, you will not believe me, but. And then the excuse, right? So the excuse, will leave it in a, in a, as an h1 as well because I think it has the same size yeah they both have the same size so it's okay to have it as a h1 again let's just put a fake excuse here my, like my dog has eaten my dog ate my food let's save and reload Oh my god, you will never be my dog ate my food. So all we have to do is replace this with a new excuse every time. So let's figure that out first. So if on every refresh we're gonna be doing a new excuse, then we know that the onload function gets called on every refresh. Let me start using arrows instead of functions because I think it's important to, to use arrows instead of functions because arrows behave a lot more a lot more like functions in other languages because JavaScript has uh, one thing that makes that makes functions from JavaScript different from functions from other languages and that's basically the word these and I'm gonna not gonna talk about that right now I'm just gonna say that if you use arrows functions instead of normal functions your life is gonna be easier because you're gonna you're gonna have less problems in the future. So my recommendation is to use arrows. Arrows is the same as a function, basically. You say, instead of saying the word function and putting the query bracket like this, you just remove the word function and you put an arrow with uh, an equal here. It's gonna work the same, look. I'm just gonna save, remando, 
remember to rebundle re every time you change your JS or your CSS. If you change your HTML, you don't have to because HTML is the one loading the bundle. Look here, we're loading the bundle as a script. So we don't have to rebundle uh, if we do any changes in the index because index is not part of the bundle, basically. Okay, let's refresh and it's the same with the arrows or without. So the second thing will be, let me just uh, create a new random number, like random number. I'm gonna do it from math.rand them times 10 and I'm gonna put it on the console.log so you guys can see that we're gonna be using that technique to generate a new excuse on every refresh now if I start if I start refreshing you'll see how it's gonna have a random number on every refresh let me see <clears throat> oh that's in the console my, my bad here it is. Here's the random number. It's nine, now it's seven, now it's one. So basically, on every refresh, I'm generating a random number. We have to generate a random excuse, not a random number. But it's kind of the same. No, it's not the same, but it's it starts the same. It starts by doing something on refresh. So now, if I want to display this random number instead of in the console, if I want to display it on the website, I have to put it on the DOM basically. So to put it on the DOM, we have to grab an element from the DOM. We have to first identify it. Let's just say that this will be the excuse as an ID. And then I can say here document dot query selector. And I'm gonna say the element with the ID the excuse dot inner HTML is equal to random number. So basically, I'm putting on the DOM now the message. I'm putting it inside the excuse on every refresh again. So let's refresh. So here it is the number, you see? If I refresh, there's another number. If I refresh, there's another number, and so and so. So instead of random number, we're gonna have an excuse. So let's create a function that it's called generate excuse. Let's say let generate excuse it's equal to an arrow remember to use arrows and not normal functions because they will make your life easier and here we're going to return an excuse return my dog ate my homework and let's just instead of putting random number on the inner HTML, I'm going to put random excuse, but I have to call the function. So I have to put this uh, open and close brackets, basically, because I want to call this function. Remember, this is a function, and functions are called by using parentheses or brackets. I will call it parentheses, like this, like parentheses. I think it's like that. Let me see. Yeah parenthesis because there's so much brackets like we have now curly brackets here we have square brackets for the arrays like when you use them like this and I want to call this one parenthesis so we can differentiate or identify the different types of brackets each of them will have a different name basically so after we call the generic excuse I'm gonna now delete my random number because we don't need it anymore and instead of Printing a random number, I'm going to print an excuse. Unload. So there, we have a missing semicolon somewhere. Where? Ah, here. Yeah. So let's bundle again. There it is. And now we have my dog ate my food, my homework. So all we have to do now is this string that it's here, it's, it's generated. You have to generate this string randomly instead of having just the same hardcore string all the time. So I'm gonna split my problem like any sentence. We have to split it in the in the typical parts of a sentence, like a pronoun. And instead of having one pronoun, I'm gonna have an array of pronouns. And then 
let's also do like subject let's also do like um, let's also use actions let's use a uh, where uh, I think that's enough we have enough um, one of parts of the sentence so the next thing will be like we have to well let of course fill it with dummy data so the subject can be a jogger it can be a raccoon it can be a dog it can be a driver it could be a comedian it could be a pine cone and I guess that's enough and then for the actions let's say that it took my or it threw my or it yelled at my So now you know where we're going, right? It also stole my stole my. This is a good moment if you're if you know where we're going. This is a good moment to try and do it on your own, and not continue watching the video. If you still don't know, just continue watching. Um, bit my, okay. Then the where. So let's say that was on the street or it was in my house and it was in my driveway oh my bad I didn't put in quotes I have to close this quote okay and then the first one is more like a the so we're gonna say some stuff like a jogger took my Oh, we're missing. We're missing something. We're missing. Let's call it like possession. What? So, like homework, or my toe, or my car, or my shoe. Okay. So it's a jogger took my homework on the street, or a jogger took my toe in my house and that's that's how we build it all we have to do now is to find a random pronoun a random subject action position and where so for that let's just do let um, uh, let's say pronoun index and let's start by putting zero on 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 all of the indexes the subject index, the action index, the possession index, and the where index. After we have all of them, we can create uh, our sentence like this. We can say, uh, let's return. Let me just keep more space here because I'm not reading everything. Okay, it's let's return a pronoun. What happened here? A pronoun on the pronoun index let me put it smaller because I think I think it's gonna be too big a pro index yeah pro index okay then concatenate with a string with a plus then uh, a subject index like that and the subject now we can copy and paste this and finish the other ones so after subject we have action after action we have possession it's still a, a, it's, it's still super big so I'm not, I'm not gonna care about renaming the indexes again I'm just gonna leave them as they are. So action index, it's here. So possession index, it's here. 
and so the where index let me make this smaller it's here so I'm saying that I want a, right now I want a pronoun a subject an action a position and a where in the position zero of all because they are all zero right now let me just uh, run this and see what happens okay let's refresh we should have an excuse there a jogger took my homework on the street that's perfect so now we have to randomize the index randomize it and we already know how to randomize <clears throat> we can we can google it let's just google it first like uh to generate a random number in JS. You can put misspells and it doesn't really matter because Google is smart. So we have to use math.random. Cool. Let's just use math.random. And in the documentation, it says that we have to, that it's going to generate a, a number between zero and one, but not including one because it's exclusive. So it's between zero and 0 0.9999999. And we want a number between, in this particular case, we want it between 0 and 1. And this one between 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, we have to say that we want our number to be multiplied by the array length. And then we have to apply a math.floor because we don't want any decimals, any extra decimals. And math.floor is for that. Basically, if you have a number like 0 0.11 and you apply a floor, a math.floor, it's going to be 0 because that 11 is going to go away. And since we're going to multiply it by the size of the, of the um, array, we are going to have a number between 0 and the length of the array basically let's just copy and paste this everywhere and replace the length of the array for each array like subject here action here possession here and where here and let's see if it works because on every refresh I'm gonna pick a new set of random numbers but all of them are going to be from zero to the same, to the length of that array. So let's bundle. Okay. And refresh. So a raccoon threw my toe on the street. Okay. The dog threw my shoe in the in my driveway. The dog threw my homework in my driveway. The driver threw my homework in my house. A driver yelled at my car in my driveway. So basically, it's, uh, it's working. If you want to have better excuses, then it's your creativity against, against the code, right? You can just uh, replace here whatever you want. So let's just add a new, well, because in the instructions, it says that it should be with uh, an on-click. And I forgot about that when I was doing the, the introduction of the video. So let's just add that uh, because it's really simple. All we have to do now is to create something that be, can be clicked. It could be a button. And, and like generate new excuse and put an ID to it so we can listen to the click. Let's say, uh, uh, I don't know, BTN, BTN, and that's it. Yeah, the BTN. And instead of being on, on load, what we're going to do is that we're going to say here document dot query selector. And we're gonna select that button it's btn and then we're gonna say add event listener we're listening to the click and we pass an arrow to it this are this function is gonna be called it this function is gonna be called it every time uh, uh, the button is clicked and here's where we're gonna put our the excuse generator the digit here's where we're gonna generate the excuse basically so instead of doing it on load what we're gonna be doing on load is start to listen to the on-click of the button. So basically, every time the button is clicked, we're gonna generate a new excuse. So let's rebundle and see that if to see if it works. Let's refresh. There's my button, and it's working. 
So that was it. Um, as you can see, you don't need many lines of code. It's more like 10 lines of code and that's it. We have our excuse generator.